I just graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison with a degree in computer science. And over the past four years, I changed a lot. I went through two years of online school, completed five software engineering internships, and now I'm finally a full-time software engineer. In this video, I'm gonna break down four principles that you can use to make the most out of your degree. And at the end, I'm also going to give you a ranked list of every single class I took, along with the five most important computer science classes that you should take. Let's get started. Principle number one, college is not there to expand your mind, it's to get things done. There's this myth going around that university is there to expand your mind. You start off this little naive village boy, and by meeting the great wizards and witches of the day, you transform into this renaissance man of wisdom and scholarly thinking. You get this whole new outlook in life and become an incredible thinker, all because of the college you go to. But that's completely wrong. Maybe if you were at Cambridge with Oppenheimer in the 1800s, or at frickin' Princeton with Einstein, sure, yeah, maybe then college was for becoming a physicist, philosopher, thinker, and growing and expanding your mind. But nowadays, the purpose of college is to develop hard technical skills in a collaborative environment. Dude, the best experiences I ever had in university were when I was struggling with difficult technical problems that were directly applicable to my software engineering profession with other ambitious and dedicated students who were all studying the same thing. Here's the thing, I bought into this lie freshman year. I took philosophy and literature classes. I thought they were going to make me into this big brain monk that can fucking read minds and see the future but they were largely a waste of time. And I suffered because I took those classes instead of important fundamental computer science classes. In my current company, I have a teammate named Harrison, who's a senior software engineer, and he's a very good engineer. He was promoted within eight months from a junior level software engineer to a senior level software engineer. For context, most people take four to six months to make that jump. He did it in less than one year. And a few weeks ago, we were working together on a problem. And he turns to me and says, hey, you've taken a compilers class, right? To him, it was obvious. Everybody takes a compilers class, right? But I didn't. And you know why? It's because I was taking philosophy and literature and economics classes. And in that moment, I was hit with this wave of regret because I didn't go deep into computer science. I didn't take that opportunity I was given to be in this rigorous environment with other like-minded students to go as deep as possible into the field that would actually be useful to my career. I can tell you vaguely about Aristotle and supply and demand curves, but I can't give you this fundamental knowledge that people use every day in my job. Now, I'm not saying that the only thing in life that matters is your coding skills. What I am saying is that university is not the place to expand your mind. University is in that end game post-apocalyptic stage right now. Sure, maybe a hundred years ago it was something, but right now it's fully on the decline. The good news is that right now is that golden era for high quality YouTube channels and educational podcasts. The truth is that almost all of my non-technical learning over the past four years came from all of the YouTube videos I made and watched all of the podcasts I listened to, all of the books I read. That's where my growth in the liberal arts has come from, not Rhetoric 200. So take my advice, run like the plague away from every non-technical class in your degree and take as many difficult computer science classes as you can. Because you will have your entire life to ponder psychology and philosophy, college is not the place to do it. Principle number two is to launch yourself into the professional world as fast as possible. People often look at my resume or my LinkedIn and they're like, how do you have five software engineering internships? Most people struggle to get even one during their junior year. So they think it's crazy that I have five of them. And the reason is because from literally day one of freshman year, I had this goal in my mind that I need to get an internship as fast as possible. Here's the thing. The professional world works in a staircase system. So once you're on a certain staircase, you can move around willy nilly. It's also really easy to move back down. The hard part is getting up one level, getting onto that staircase. The stair you're on dictates the number of opportunities you have access to. So let's say step one is starting your computer science degree. Great, you're already on step one. But step two is getting your first software engineer internship. Because once you're on that level, you can now get all of the other internships. And once you've gotten multiple software engineering internships, you can get any new grad software engineering position. See what I mean? It's about climbing that staircase as fast as possible. Because if you don't, God forbid, you graduate college without a single software engineering internship, now you have to jump two or three steps in one go, which is much, much harder. Finding an entry-level job without any experience in this market is near impossible. Here's something I've noticed lately. So 
a lot of people during the summer after their first or second year, they'll move back home. They'll go back to their hometown. They'll hang out with their friends, live with their parents, and maybe they'll pick up work at the local cafe or diner. And when I'm visiting the local IHOP or Starbucks and I see these people working there, I look at them and I think they're fucking stupid. Why would you waste your summer getting paid $10 an hour at Starbucks or $8 an hour at Taco Bell? when you have this golden period of time, this two to three months when you're not taking classes and you can get some professional experience to put on your resume. You need to get some professional experience quickly. And here are some ways you can do that. Number one, pad your resume. Are you doing whatever you possibly can to make your resume look good? Dude, spend hours on your resume. People spend two seconds looking at resumes and making a rejection. It's a very snap judgment kind of thing. My company right now is going through some hiring and I've seen my teammate Alicia look at the resumes. We have straight up rejected people within three seconds because their formatting is ugly and they look horrible compared to more qualified candidates. People get fucked because they don't spend the proper amount of time and energy working on their resume. Your resume is that first gate. You need to make it good before you get any level of success. So you should be spending hours, maybe even weeks, maybe even months grinding in your resume. Show it to your friends, show it to your family, show it to the career people at the university because this is your golden piece of paper. It's the first gate and it's worth investing in. And I know it's a lot of bullshitting. Half of it doesn't really mean anything. It's a lot of fluff work, but it's worth investing in because you have to play the game to win the game. You need to sell yourself to get into the door. So spend time in your resume. You also need to start studying lead code early. I've talked about this before, so we'll keep it short, but a lot of people mess up by starting lead code too late. I only started in my second year and I could have gotten a better internship in my first year of college if I'd only done some rudimentary basic lead code problems but nobody told me to do that. So I'm telling you right now, start doing it. Go through the easy problems. You might be able to do them already, maybe not, but spend one hour per day studying lead code, minimum five hours per week. If you can front load this effort, the benefits are exponential. I know people who are working at the local insurance company at age 50. I also know people who are at Google at age 22. It's not about the number of hours you put in. It's about being extremely smart with when and where you put your effort and taking advantage of the explosive nature of career growth. Also do one mock interview per week. It's about starting with the end in mind. Back in high school, I would use this technique with the ACT reading where you would read the questions first before reading the passage. And the reason it worked is because by looking at the end, starting with the end in mind, you would pick up on small details and answer questions more correctly and save time. You go Go into mock interviews knowing that you're going to fail the boss fight, but because you're exposed to the end goal, then when you're studying your algorithms class or working through lead code, you know exactly what to focus on in your preparation. I think mock interviews with friends are incredibly valuable. I even did paid mock interviews with Fang people. Being able to hold your own in coding interviews is a completely separate skill from just purely being able to solve the problem. You need to practice these communication skills and the best way to do that is to grab a friend and have them mock interview you and then you can switch it up. You can mock interview them. I probably did 10 plus of these and it made a massive difference. I'm so much better at interviewing because of them. If you pad your resume, start lead code early and do one mock interview per week, you will be light years ahead of everybody who's waiting till their junior year to get some professional experience. Principle number three is on the first day of class, make an ally. Winston Churchill once said, there is at least one thing worse than fighting with allies and that is to fight without them. Let's go back to my sophomore year of college during COVID. During this time, I had basically no friends. I even spent one, maybe two months not hanging out with a single person. And that semester of my college was my worst semester ever. I ended up having to drop multiple classes because if I stayed in them, I was going to fail them. Whereas my senior year of college, I was socializing multiple times per week. I was hitting the gym, going to singing lessons, and I actually did my best. It was my best semester. Which is surprising, right? Because sophomore year, I was all monk mode. I had a ton of free time, but I did horrible. And my senior year, I had very little free time, but I did great. And the reason is because my senior year of college, I made friends. I made allies and that changed everything. Here was my game plan. So my senior year on the first day of class, I forced myself to talk to at least one person and get their phone number. And to take it even further, I made myself be the group chat guy for every single class. I would throw the join link in the group discussion page and get 30 to 100 people to join for every class. And I was also the guy who organized every single study session. In particular, this class, Operating Systems, is known to be one of the hardest computer science classes. But when I took it, I did great. I did really excellent. 
I ended up scoring in the top 10 to 20% for every single exam. And the reason is because I was the one who was setting up every study session. I had a group of 10 people, all of which who were semi good at operating systems. I would put them in a room together and lead the exam prep. The group was like a large brain. Every individual person had a great understanding of one part of the subject. So as a whole, we all perfectly understood the course. If I didn't understand multi-threading, my friend had me covered. And if he didn't understand memory virtualization, I could cover that. You end up learning way more in your classes than if you were studying by yourself. And this makes you do much, much better in every class you do this with. So day one of every class, always make an ally and be the one to make the study session happen. Most people are not going to take initiative and reach out to you. So you need to be the one to get the people in the room. If you do this, you will be much successful in all of your classes. Principle number four is to surround yourself with people who have already done it. If you want to get an internship, just find people who have interned at prestigious companies like Google and Meta, and just by being around them, your world will open up to you. Here's the thing. A lot of things in life are difficult to figure out for the first time, but when someone's already figured it out, it's a lot easier to teach it to others. It's really not that hard to replicate. For example, in the 1600s, Isaac Newton took like five to 10 years to discover calculus and popularize it for the first time. But nowadays, every single senior in high school learns calculus. I learned calculus, you learned calculus, we're both not Isaac Newton. It was incredibly difficult to discover it for the first time, but once it's already discovered, it's incredibly easy to teach. This is why you need to be around people who have completed these difficult challenges, because even if it was hard for them, it'll be a lot easier for you if you can just look at what they did and copy them. Okay, I'll give you an example. I never made it to Google, but my brother Adil, he made it to Google. He got the software engineering internship offer. So I asked him, hey, how can I get Google? I'm struggling here. What should I do? And he looked me in the eye and said, doesn't everybody get Google? To him, he got Google. All of his friends got Google. Getting Google is the easiest shit in the world to him. And just by being around him, I've picked up on so many small things that have taken me years to figure out by myself. Because it's much easier to teach something than to figure it out for the first time. This is why you watch these YouTube videos, okay? It's a lot easier for you just to do what I say than for you to go out there and make all these mistakes and learn everything yourself. There's another theory that kind of relates to this called the strength of weak ties. It's this idea that infrequent acquaintance relationships are actually way better for your career success than your best friends. Here's why. It's because whatever benefit you could have gotten from your best friends, you've probably already used it up. And to be honest, you can't keep that many best friends. I don't know about you, but at any given moment, I can only have maybe two to four strong friendships with people. It's really hard to get beyond that number. But you can keep hundreds of acquaintances at once, and chances are that you haven't used up all of their opportunities. These people will expand your network exponentially. Dude, a lot of my greatest successes in life have come from random acquaintances. I met this guy, Adam, in one of my classes like three years back, and a few months ago, he sent me a picture of a flyer for the company I work for that was advertising in the computer science building. He walked by it, he thought to himself, hey, I think Amon's looking for a job. So he literally just snapped me a picture and sent it to me. And I work there right now. It's only because I was friends with this random guy a few years ago, and just by chance he walked by this flyer that I have a job right now. When you have tons of weak friends, opportunities come to you. You don't have to go out and look for them. It's like magic how well it works. Okay, so how do you actually make weak friends with people who have already done it? Some people go to networking events. I don't actually like those. I feel like it's a bunch of sweaty people just bumping into each other and trying to give out their resumes and just being socially awkward. I don't feel like I connect with a human level with anyone there. I found the greatest success with actually attempting to become someone's friend rather than talking them up at some networking event. Also, the problem with networking events is that usually the best people aren't at the events. Think about it, right? The events are 99% going to be sweaty people with very little experience who are looking to get that one golden opportunity and just benefit off of someone else. It's not a room of highly accomplished people, usually. It's a bunch of low-level people trying to get experience. Here's what I do. So I will go on LinkedIn, look for people at my university with crazy internships at companies like Microsoft and Tesla, and I'll send them a connection request and straight up message them asking to be their friend. Like, hey, it's nice to meet you. I'm looking to meet more people at my university in the computer science program. Do you want to grab coffee this weekend and chat? And it works like half the time. Usually people say yes. Another thing you can do is keep your ears open for when people mention some crazy work experience they've had. 
I once met this guy named Suresh at some Mediterranean restaurant like six months ago, and he casually dropped that he had interned last year at TikTok and is going there full time. And you best know, if I ever want to work at TikTok, I'm going to pull out my phone, text Suresh for a referral. And people wonder, how do I get referrals for every single company I apply to? It's because I have tons of weak friendships with people at excellent companies that I can reach out to at any moment. It works like magic, it's that easy. So make an effort to surround yourself with people who have already done it and make lots of weak ties because this will help you achieve your goals much, much faster. If you guys want my ranked list of every single class I took as a part of my computer science degree, along with the five most important computer science classes, you can look at the link in the description and sign up to my newsletter and I'll send it right to you. You can unsubscribe at any time. It's completely for free. Also check out my Instagram. It's at Amon Manazer. I've started to post more often there about my goals and life aside from the world of tech. So please consider following me there. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.